This is WT for TST, and this evening we're honoured to be joined by John the Doc Doherty. How are you doing, mate? All oh, good, pal. All good. Just um, sitting at home, um, waiting on my kid going out on Halloween. Yeah, it looks like above you there, it looks like a, a train, you know, like the storage compound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 sto- I'm storage away. I'm packed away just now. <laughs> right mate so for first time on TST what we normally do is go through childhood upbringing um, you all started in Inverness where you were born yeah um, well obviously I just I was born in Inverness and um, I, well, we actually moved all over quite a lot but Inverness was our main my main place we was up there for about for about 12 years on and off and then we moved back down to Montrose um, but first of all I was up in Inverness for a while uh, about 12 years and um, obviously, I went to the my first boxing gym there, and I come back down to Montrose, and then we stayed there, and I, uh, and then I went to a boxing gym there, and that's when I basically started off getting onto the GB squad and that, and got high, a lot higher in my boxing. Um, obviously, I started off in the, the Inverness uh, gym, and I was in there for a few years. But um, yeah, I, my lifestyle's not very exciting to be fair. We obviously I went to school, done all primary school, but never done high school, and. Um, I got into a few bits of fights and that was it. <laughs> oh, you never did high school? No, I never, like, I never ever done high school. I just went down primary school up to primary seven. And uh, I never, I was never really in school. I was always getting expelled. So um, I was quite a bad kid. Right, so, so so you went from primary school and then they basically said to you, sorry, John, you can't come into high school. You're a naughty lad. I, I tell you what it is. <laughs> we, I tell you what it is. We... Us like us, us travellers, we don't we don't really go to high school. We go, we go in primary school, and then um, like my dad gave me the option either uh, I can either do the boxing or come work on my dad. Basically, that's the option we get. And he said if you want to do your boxing, I can I can fund you for it. Um, to how long you want to do it for? So I just said yeah, I want to do the boxing, and then basically it just started from there when I come up primary school. So so you first time you went in a boxing ring was probably what nine ten. Uh, in a boxing gym, yeah, but I was always training back home with my brother. My older brother always done boxing, so I, I, I always had boxing in me for about since I was about seven years old. So was it your brother who got you into boxing, yeah? Yeah, my brother was the first one that got me in boxing. Obviously, I used to spar him all the time. Uh, he's taking the pads and at the start, and I used to spar him all the time. And he was always just to get the better of me. And um, I was I went to the boxing gym once, and then uh, I, I only went there for a laugh. To be fair, we used to go over there and play football, kick the football down, and. Um, and I just started hitting the bag, and then the coach seen um, what what was about, and he said, "You know what? He's got he's got potential him." Uh, and I just started going, and then um, I can remember my first spa. It was against a girl. I sparred a girl. It was the manager's gym. Uh, the boys called Larry. It was his daughter. Uh, she was about old than me. She was twenty four, and I was about oh, I was about nine, and I sparred her. Well, I was a bit older, about 12, 11 I was, and I sparred her. And I can remember she absolutely battered me. Oh, I thinking, I've just got battered off a girl, but I think she went to the army. She went to the army and all that and trained, so she was quite good. Do you know what I mean? So, but oh, I was I was upset. Like I was upset when I got beat off her. But then I just kept going back and back and kept stuck in at it. And then obviously I had a brother there pushing me on, and um, he, he pushed me on for that little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Um, when nights I didn't want to go to the gym, he made me go and just um, for mom where just went on it. And then obviously I went to the next gym, had a few fights with them. I was actually on beating with them. Uh, I think it was like fourteen and all of them. And then I come down to Montrose and just started boxing in and I started boxing a lot higher, more better people, do you know what I mean? And then uh, that's what basically started uh, my career, started progression, do you know what I mean? And then I went to Aberdeen Boxing Gym and then that's where I stuck from Byron. And then uh, I went from there onwards, to be fair with you. So you had a, you had a decent amateur career that ultimately took you to the, the GB squad, yeah? Yeah, um, I, I, that was a, ha- a lot of hard years put in like before that. I um, had a lot of hard training um, before that, do you know what I mean? Um, had a lot of um, ups and downs on the road, and as everyone does. And um, you know what? I actually, when I was about 16 and 17 year old, I was, I got to my test, and um, I was basically going to pack it in. Um, like I had it in my mind, but then I had my dad pushing me on, and then if my dad wasn't there, I most likely wouldn't be here where I'm at just now. Um, but he kept me at it, and then um, I just kept pushing on. To be fair, my brother Frank, that's the older one, he stopped the boxing. Uh, he started smoking and that, and uh, passed his test, and just just a normal, uh, get golf and you know I mean, just normal business. And uh, I kept at it. My dad kept me at it, and um, I'm thankful for that. And now I'm here. Do you know what I mean? So, smoke, drink, girls. That's normal. That's it. That's that's that, that, that's what happened to him. And um, 
it took him away. But then I had a got a younger brother. He's fourteen. He started the boxing, but um, he was just wasn't hacked for it. He just wasn't. Um, his body wasn't built for it. So, so um, have you got any stories about the uh, the GB squad then? What, what was that like? Like boxing for your country? Listen, it was very good, unbelievable. To fair with you, the experience you get, the sparring you get, the the, the, the coaches were says they're unbelievable. They know what they're talking about. Do you know what I mean? So I can't disgrade uh, um, the GB GB squad. If if I was an amateur boxer and I was to tell people what to do, it would be got in the GB squad because. Um, Promoters look on the GB squad, like the pro promoters look at it, and, and, and you, if you're on there, you know you're high level. Do you know what I mean? And um, I was number one on there. Do you know what I mean? So I wasn't. Um, but at the start, I wasn't. There was a. Um, I had another boy in front of me, and then I beat him in obviously in the senior Commonwealth Games, but I beat him in the youth Commonwealth Games as well. So it was a bit of a nightmare because he was English, and um, they do favour England in a little bit more than Scotland. So we had to do a bit more to be fair with you, a bit more than. Than the normal guy from England, do you know what I mean? So right. I just had to keep doing what we had to do and um, keep my chin down, just kept working away. And then finally, I got to the number one spot, and um, it was the decision to go pro or go to the Olympics. And um, I just took the decision and just to go um, pro. So, what, what was the best highlight? Was it the bronze medal in the GB squad? Was that there? Um, you know what? If I if I if I would have done the if, I, if the weight was much easier, I would have won more. I would have I'd probably won gold. But the weight issue was just too much. And my best trip was probably the Commonwealth Games, yes. But the best points I fought would probably be the Europeans when I got the silver, um, because the point I got beat in the Commonwealth Games, if I was a hundred percent and my weight was good, I know I could beat him. Um, but I, saying it and doing it is two different things. Do you know what I mean, it's past the time now, so I've just got to learn and live. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know what I'd done wrong that time and uh, it was the weight issue and uh, I couldn't make the weight anymore and that was the pro- that was the reason I went pro because I would have had to move it to 81 and it would have had I would have had to start all that again for Olympics and obviously Ben Whitaker moved up and it would be another a fight between me and him do you know what I mean they, they, they favoured Ben Whitaker a lot do you know what I mean so it was hard for me like in training here and like he's going to tournaments before me because there's such and such do you know what I mean so it was just a big, a big I had to think for a while to be fair with you if I was going to go pro or not, but that that's what made made me go pro is that I, if I was going to stay amateur, I would have had to go to eighty one. So we're turning pro. Um, how how did uh, the Tony Sims link up? Because that gym feels an uh, absolute country miles away from where you where you were staying and stuff. So how did that all come about? Well, I was actually um, I spoke to his son Charles Sims. He got in contact with me and um, just basically chatting away. We chatted away quite often, and um, it just went from there. He come down training and. Um, I come back from America actually on a training camp with GB, and like two days later we had, a, we had a week off GB, and it was two days later I could come down, and all my time difference was off. Like my I was sleeping pattern was all off. So, uh, I said I said I'll come down. I shouldn't have really went down. I went down sparring for a week, yeah. uh, not just sparring, doing the training and that there. And um, Tony said, when you want to turn pro, um, they put me they put me in a hotel and paid for all the hotel and that. And um, they put me down for training. He said, when you want to turn pro, just get in touch with us. Uh, ask the Commonwealth Games. I said, yeah, no problem. And they, they liked me from there onwards. That's how it got on. And then obviously everyone in the gym, um, they're unbelievable fighters, do you know what I mean? So there was no there was no there was no ifs and buts to do it, yes or no. Do you know what I mean? It was uh, just a, a straight answer, yes, do you know what I mean? So if I was going to turn pro, it was going to be with Tony Sims. He's one of the best trainers in the country and um, maybe in the world you could pop him into do you know what I mean? Um, uh, so I just pop my full belief. I've got my full belief in Tony Sims. And obviously Eddie Hearn, uh, they, they know what they're doing with me. And um, I just got to listen to Tony Sims and, and hopefully I'll get a world title. There's some stable that you're in down there with Sims Gym though, isn't it? I mean, who stands out for you in the gym? Um, there's, a, there's, I mean, there's a lot of good fighters and uh, obviously I'm not going to pick who stands out. Oh, out come on. The fighters, but <laughs> I'm going to... let. There's a lot of good fighters. I mean, there's there's a lot. There's Joe Cadena. He's one hell of a fighter. There's Martin J. Ward, one hell of a fighter. I mean, there's there's a lot. There's Felix Cash. There's, um, there's you know what our gym is all different styles. That's what I like about our gym. Though there's not just one style um, like brawling or boxing. There's all different styles. I mean, so and there's Connor Ben. He's improving a lot. Like I, I've been in the gym with him for this camp and he's improved high, high level a lot. And um, his next fight's gonna. Um, Put him onto the big stage. Do you know what I mean um, a big statement and maybe stop? I think he could stop the next boy. But listen, um, it's a big step up, and um, I wish him all the best. But I'm not going to obviously pick who stands out in the gym the most because I think I think our gym is on a good run just now. And um, 
You know what I mean? They've got to keep doing what they're doing and um, we'll all be world champion one day. Good stuff, mate. So uh, your next fight was supposed to be the Jack Arnfield fight. Um, yeah. You know, with Jack uh, rupturing his appendix. I spoke to Jack quite a bit through his, his bit, but the first time I spoke to Jack, um, the fight was on and, and he actually said that th- that fight was going to be a big step up for you. Is that how you saw that as well? Yeah, one million percent. Um, I wouldn't have thought no one really. I've been focused on my last good fight and um, you know what? I'm feel looking at that fight. Anyone looking at that last fight there, they'll think, oh, John Dock is one easy person to beat. They'll beat him easy. Um, because that was not a very good performance. The only thing I got a good at performance was stopping them playing folks. Um, I didn't show anything what I was working on in the gym or what I can do. That was anyone, as I've said on camera um, uh, loads of times, is they'll look and think, oh, do well, definitely take that fight with John Doherty. But listen, I just think this fight, I thought, well, Anfield obviously pulled out now. Um, I thought if I, I, that's a fight I need to get myself up for it to know I'm going to get. It's, it's a 50-50 fight, do you know what I mean? But in my head, it wasn't. I, I was going to walk through Anfield. And um, I know it's hard to say it now when he's pulled out. Um, and I know there was an issue, do you know what I mean? So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say I was going to smash them all. Gonna, but in my own brain, I knew what I was going to do. And it was going to put a big statement out there, do you know what I mean? And I know I, I needed Anfield, somebody like Anfield to do that. Um, but listen, uh, things happen. And um, well, maybe we can get it on in, uh, in another time when he's done back or something. He, he definitely still wants that fight with you. He was ta- I talked to him the other day. He put one. Um, we put a video out, and he was talking about maybe after Christmas he'll get one more fight, and then he'll definitely be interested in fighting you for some sort of belt. And uh, he wanted Eddie to, to to talk about that as well. So I mean, I think it'd be a fantastic fight between you two. What, how how would you approach that? What would you have? Uh, you might not want to talk about that, but what tactics would you have employed? There would have been there would there, there would have been two tactics. Um, there would have been like. Uh, Coming forward, pressure and boxing. Do you know what I mean? You know what? Uh, my last fight, I was going to show completely different. Everyone knows I can punch hard. I've got that one punch shot, but I, I was going to show something different in that fight. And um, and I, 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 it's been taken away from me. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't do it now. And um, I'm not going to tell you what exactly would have done in the approach in that fight, but it would have been a different. I would have been a lot different, John Dockett, from the last fights in uh, Anfield. The reason he took that fight was he's obviously been looking at my last fight and thinking, oh, what? you know what? Oh, I could beat John. Do- anyone, honest to God, anyone will think that nah, I can beat John Duck on that last performance. The only thing I got good at last performance was knocking them, uh, Anthony Fox out. Um, but listen, I can't wait for my next fight. Whoever it's going to be, I don't know who, who it's going to be. To be fair, there's been a few names chucked in the hat um, and a few names has uh, turned it down. So I've just got to wait and see. It's only two weeks away, do you know what I mean? So um, we're in the bubble, I think, next Monday. So the better they need to hurry up and get a point. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be hard to get a decent opponent now with a two weeks' notice. But will it definitely go ahead still? Yeah, yeah, that's I've been mean, done. I'm still training like it's going ahead. Do you know what I mean? Um, but they're saying there's a national lockdown happening on Wednesday and Monday, whatever it's day. So you, tomorrow's not promised, as everyone says. Do you know what I mean? So, um, we'll just have to wait and see what, what the crack is. But I'm training like I've just finished the SNC session and I run, so um, I'm training like I'm still fighting and um. I've done a seven-week camp, so I don't want uh, this to just to go to waste. I've been training very hard. Uh, my last performance was a very b- bad performance, so I've got to prove all, all the people who said bad about me and all the doubt was that how good I am. And that, I was going to show this fight against Sanfield, but obviously it's been pulled for me. You can show it against whoever else it was going to be. Whoever else, yeah. exactly, yeah. Exactly. Good stuff, mate. Right, well, that's it for us. Just uh, one last bit. We like to finish on a few questions from the followers and the viewers. So, um yeah. That's all right with you. Baza wants to know, um, are you scared to lose? Yes, everyone's scared to lose. I'm definitely scared. I go in the ring. Not just now on my last few performances, like my first few fights, because they're not, I know I'm going to win. It's just looking good. But when I fight something decent, obviously everyone's scared of losing. But you don't have it going into your head when you're going to the ring. But yeah, everyone's scared to lose. I don't want to lose. If I lose, that means I can't fight for my family anymore. Do you know what I mean? I've got to keep winning to provide for my family, put food on the table. All right, mate. Paul, he wants to know, um, do you have any superstitions? What does that mean, superstitions? So, like, do you have any pre, pre-fight pre rituals or is there something that you always do before you fight just to make sure, like, you get good luck? Um, uh, my granny gave me a, 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 a little cross thing and uh, I always I always take that with me, a horseshoe, sorry, it is. I always take that with me to the fight. Um, the fight like before I always um, take out my bag and look at it do you know what I mean and um, 
I think that gives me luck. So that is a superstition, mate. Yeah, have... that's it. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and then the last question we always finish on, mate, which seems to go down quite well with you, boxers. Um, what are your top three chocolate bars? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh there's too many of them. Oh, what? You know what? I like chocolate delight, is it? It's what? Yeah, a, a chocolate delight, is it? Don't oh, yeah. Like choc- oh, they're, they're nice. I'll put my best one. Um, doing the Twix, a Twix, and the Twix, um, the white Twix one. All right. I, I like. I, 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 don't want. There's too many chocolates. There's too many chocolates. I can't actually name them, but um, I like a lot of them. I mean, every box likes chocolate. <laughs> Good stuff, mate. Right, well, that's it. Have you got anything to say for your uh, the viewers or for your sponsors, mate? Well, we'll just no, on. just listen uh, to my sponsors. Um, thanks very much for all the support they're giving me. Do you know what I mean? And through this hard time as well. And um, thanks very much for yourself as well, giving me this interview and you know, obviously putting out there. Do you know what I mean? Thanks very much for and um, for my support. Keep on, um, keep your eye out because um, the dog's coming um, next two weeks is going to be a, a, a big a big bang. Good stuff, mate. We'll catch up after your fight, yeah? Cheers, Paul. Thank you very much, yeah? Enjoy your Halloween, Cheers, mate. Paul. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Right. Cheers.